Das Spiel Canal, yet another gaming channel with no budget for animation or even a catchy tune. Welcome, Captain. It is time for Operation Demo Bunker. Today you will be party to the biggest demo battle we have ever created. Ha <laughs> ha, jolly good. Scenario 1 in the Bolt Action Rulebook. No Man's Land. A simple kick ass and take name scenario if you know what I mean. Six turns of carnage at 28mm. Two forces face off and attempt to jolly well shake the tree. One victory point per unit wiped out. Just sounds spiffing. Victory goes to whoever is two points clear at the end, otherwise it's a draw. At the end of turn six, roll a d6. On a four up, there's a seventh turn to play. This scenario also includes preparatory bombardment. Good show. So after deployment, on a two up, the cannons open up and strike Jerry's position, but also Jerry will be trying to strike ours. But regardless of what happens with those barrages, you have your orders and the attack must go ahead as planned. Now for the sights. Old Jerry, being guided by Jim, is sporting a second lieutenant with one retinue. Now usually, a second lieutenant can give one additional order to a unit within six inches, but the old Germans can give that to two, the swines. Jim's gonna be coming into the action with two 10-man, so full strength grenadier squads. They're equipped identically with six rifles, three assault rifles, and a light machine gun. He has an air observer, a hair, <laughs> oh, they'll love that, the silly bugger society at Cambridge. You give Fritz a taste of that British spunk. Anyway, they have an air observer who can call in an air assault in one round of the conflict. A sneaky little sniper team as well, so watch out for them. And three, that's right, three vehicles. So Jerry's certainly gonna have more vehicles than us. Bugger. Two identical Sonderkraft Fahrzeug, Zwei Einen Fünfzig, and one Zwei Hundert Zwei and Zwanzig, which is a mouthful. So we'll just call the 251s the Half Track or Hanamag, and the 222 the Armored Car. All the units in Jim's forces are regular. So intelligence tells us they'll be taking a wound on four. And also a big thank you to Tim for lending these great models to Jim for use. Jolly good chap that Tim. Now the plucky but vastly less well painted Brits, they're a British reinforced platoon, mostly made up of parrots. They also have a second lieutenant and he has one buddy with him but there's no special rules for them. A forward observer for some barrage fun which is free for the Brits so on one turn he can call in a barrage with a bing and a bong and a buzz buzz buzz. There's two full strength paratroop sections each is sporting nine rifles and an LMG. There's a six man commando squad, so that's some full strength, but these all have submachine guns as well as anti-tank grenades, giving them that tank hunter trait. With that gun and grenade combo, those will be wanting to get in close. There's a medium mortar team with a spotter, a pier team for some 12 inch anti-armor action, a six pound artillery gun, and finally an SAS Jeep, which sports a front facing heavy machine gun and a medium machine gun, which has been upgraded to a Vickers for an extra D6 when shooting. It also has two backwards facing medium machine guns, so Jerry can't sneak up on that one. Most of the forces are veteran. Paras and commandos have to be vets, so they'll be taking wounds on fives. So that's eight units for the Germans and nine for the British. So the Brits will have nine order dice in the bag and the Germans, well, can you guess? <laughs> Bloody good show. Eight, that's right. Smashing effort, you good chap. Both sides have opted for sticking some units in reserve. So these can join later in the fray after everybody's getting their teeth in. The Germans have gone for the two half tracks in reserve, each transporting in a grenadier squad. The Brits, they've left the Jeep, the commandos, one squad of paras and the HQ in reserve. Now let's skip past deployment to where the real meat and bones is going to start off. You make sure you have a decent scrap with those fiendish jerrys. Bit of Jolly old fun, and make sure you're back home in time for tea and medals. God save the king, down with Hitler is what I say. Well, thanks for that briefing. Okay, so we're going into round one. As the forces have already been deployed, we'll be starting with bombardment on both sides. And we both roll very disappointingly, ones, and immediately move on with the game, despite the need. Despite that we should be rolling this for each unit, so it's a good start with the rules. So first out of the bag is a Tommy Alder Dice, the Brits. And we'll be trying to make use of that six pounder gun. Launching a high explosive shell at the sniper Jim has deployed in the building opposite. The HE round ignores cover 
punching right through the wall, but still misses in spectacular fashion. Good job. Reserves still need to have their order dice in the bag, but on turn one, they can only be ordered down, so we have a series of doing that. In the order they went down, Krauts, Brits, Krauts, Brits, Brits, Krauts, Krauts. The ninth dice has to come out of the bag. Jim has no reserves to order down, so goes for a sniper shot on the artillery crew. The sniper ignores negative hit modifiers, so the gun shield on the six pounder does nothing. Fortunately, Jim gets the hit, but not the wound, giving the gun one pin. The Brits are next, ordering another down of the last reserve, and with the next dice drawn, ordering the Piat team to move out, but stay out of line of sight of those vicious armoured car guns. Jim pulls the next dice and puts a fire order on his air observer, marking out the paratroopers over by the far hedgerow. So he's hoping to get some nice aircraft fighting coming on in the round two. He pulls a second dice and he's ordering his HQ to take it easy. Enjoy a verse while the boys in grey look to flatten the Brits. The Brits pull dice 14 and order the mortar spotter. The spotter allows the mortar to use his line of sight, so it greatly extends the capability of the mortar but it does require a fire order. So this turn he's gonna edge his way through the woods and try and get better sight of the German front line. Jim's last dice, and he decides to commit the armored car, advancing around the chateau to fire a one inch HE template into the six pounder. Now the armored car gets two shots and he gets two hits, and each hit is a one inch template. So when you hit with a template, you put the template over where it is that you want to target and anything that's caught under that, those are the models that have been hit. Now given the size of the base for the six pounder, Thanks, Warlord. The one inch template hits the whole crew. So six wound dice are gonna get rolled. And as it's a light auto cannon, it also has a plus one pen. So it's wounded on fours and Jim gets four wounds. And he also rolls the two sixes to see if he gets more, even though he's already killed everything. Just to rub it in really. He's just swinging his big dick, it seems. Bloody good shot though. The six pounder is toast. Brits lose one order dice and Jim gains an early point. Last two dice in the bag are British. So the artillery spotter, he radios in the armoured car location. So at the beginning of turn two, we're going to get aircraft and artillery barrages, hopefully. And with the last order dice, the paras are going to advance over to the edge of the woods. An advance is a six inch walk for infantry and is needed to get over the hedge or small walls or shallow rivers. It leaves you with the option to fire as well after the movement, but the only target in sight is the armoured car and at armour seven, the rifles can't harm it. So not going to bother rolling and, and angering the dice gods. So that's the end of turn one. All the dice in the bag roll on turn two. One to the Krauts, zero to the Brits. So turn two, we're going to start by actioning these barrages and airstrike orders. The five up makes the magic happen. Brits go first. <laughs> yep, here it is. So the barrage is going to come in. First of all, we set the range of the barrage, which is six plus D6. Only rolled a one, so seven inch range from the marker. So we're gonna hit the armored car, we hit the snipers in the building, but we won't reach the HQ, but that's fine. Now we roll on each unit caught in the blast. So one to five will be pins and a six will be a direct hit. So first of all, we're gonna roll on the armored car. We need a six. Ba-boom. What do you say to that, Jim? Oh, you bastard. <laughs> So this is spicy now. The barrage brings in a four inch template, which also clips the building. So first we check the car. It's got four plus pen on this barrage. And if the vehicle survives, it gets D6 pins. So we roll a three, damn. So the four plus pen with this three equals seven, which is the same as the armor of the vehicle. So it's only superficial damage. With superficial, you roll on the damage chart and then you deduct three. So I roll my D6 and only get three, so I did up three. You always get a minimum of one, so one. So the car's gonna get an additional pin and it's down. Now as it took damage, we roll to see if the turret jams. On a four up it jams and it doesn't. Hmm. So we rolled a D6 for those pins, plus the one from the damage, so five pins. Would have been nice to take it out, but I guess it's missing the next turn because it's down, so fine. And it's got five pins, so that's all right, I guess. So then we check the damage to the building because that was clipped by the template. Now for HE4, you roll 3d6, and if it equals 10, building's destroyed, and any units in it go as well. <sighs> now as the template was on a vehicle outside and it clipped the building, you only do the hits against the building. The unit inside is safe if the building doesn't collapse, which it didn't. Okay, so that's the vehicle done. 
Okay, next we go to the next unit, which was inside that seven inch range, which is the sniper team. So we roll a D6 to see if they get pins or a direct hit. We need a six. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Any response at the table to that, Jim? Oh my God. <laughs> so another three D6 hits on the building and any hit goes against the unit inside. Again, if I get 10 with these three D6, that unit is automatically wiped out because the building collapses. But I didn't get a 10. So Jim orders the snipers down, so they would lose the rest of their turn if they survive, to halve the number of wound rolls that I can make. But it's not enough. I still managed to wipe them out. So boom, one point for the Brits. And finally, just to rub salt in, because I hit the building and the armored car's right next to it, the four inch template would also hit the car again. But this one isn't as effective. He just gets an extra pin. Okay, Jim's turn to try and hit with the aircraft. So he needs a five and he gets it. So he marks out 18 inches from the target squad, which was those paras. And he's going to put the marker over. He's putting the marker over by my building where I've got my units. And any unit within six inches of that mark, they get pins. Now he's going to roll to see what type of plane it is. Oh, nice. Six, eh? So that's a four inch template. It's very similar to the artillery barrage. This is allowing Jim to hit all the models in the squad. Hmm. So I'm going to order the squad down. It means they'll miss their next turn, but it cuts his 10d6 to 5d6. So he can only kill a maximum of five now, but it is pen four, so he only needs two. He gets four. Okay, so four units die, and that's not too bad. Not good, but it isn't half the squad, so I don't need to take a morale check. If you lose half the squad in an action, you have to check against morale, which is 2d6. If you get higher than their leadership, the rest bugger off, but there ain't no cowards in the power zone. As they are down for the rest of the turn, if Jim does fire at them, it will be a minus two modifier on top of any other modifiers. Now it's one point apiece, and turn two really gets started. Back to the dice bag. So Jim starts this round, and he's bringing on the half track onto the board at blistering pace. So when you want to bring a unit on from reserves, you have to pass a morale check. So it's 2d6, and it's minus one. So he just needs to get an eight or under, which he gets. Now Brits respond by also joining the board and running straight into the building by the mortar. We're looking to get a good firing position and some protection from in there. Dice three goes the way of the Reich and the grenadiers in the half track go down. So they're gonna be chilling it out and making me regret not having a big gun to shoot that bloody truck. Now it's the British turn. Maybe that mortar can split that 251 melon. Pin check first because they've got a pin from where the aircraft came in and I roll a 12. So that's a note. Bam. That means they're foobard. So the spotter, you roll on the foobar table, and in this instance, the spotter's going to run away. 12 inches, straight back out of the bloody wood. What a dick. So Jim's going to try and bring on his other half track, 2d6, and <laughs> failure. <laughs> no extra half track for him this turn. Jim gets to go again, and his air observer, who can't do much else now, is advancing and firing on the pier team. Now he's at long range, and he's moved and he is shooting at a small team. So that's a few negative modifiers. So he needs a six. It's a long shot, but he might, no, nope, he fouled it. Well, I think the Brits will retaliate there. Forward observer in the building, who also has nothing else to do the rest of this game. He's gonna try a shot. So it's long range still, small team, but he's not moving, so he's fives to hit. And no, balls, okay. So Jim's officer's gonna run around and join the fray. Good second lieutenant. So the last dice are all British. First off, that Piat team is going to try something. Advance and fire that Piat. Piat has a nice 5-up pen, only 12-inch range though. So it will wound on the 2s against infantry. But it's hitting on 5s because it's advanced and firing. And that air observer is only a small target. So come on, baby. All right, give me that 5. Oh, 3. Okay, damn. So reserves of the Brits are all that's left. The commandos are coming on. Uh, commandos have a special rule behind enemy lines. So if the unit was coming on in a flanking position, they would ignore the minus one to get on the board. But here they're just bringing on like normal reserves. The paratrooper HQ, <laughs> he fails to make it on. So he's going to have to try again in turn three. Brilliant. Last dice, the Jeep's coming on. Okay, good. So time to bring the big guns out. He's going to advance and try a shot at that half track. The Jeep has a heavy machine gun, which is plus one pen. So a wound roll of six would give me superficial damage, which is okay, I suppose. Of course, it is long range and it's advanced and the half track has cover. So to hit it needs sixes followed by sixes. So because it would take more than six to hit it with those modifiers, we do sixes followed by sixes. 
I have to roll a six, and if I get that, I need to roll another six, and then I've hit it, and then I need to roll to wound. So I've got three dice with this big gun. Can I roll any sixes, and then roll some more, and then roll some more? No, it wasn't even a near miss. So that's the lot. No units destroyed in this round. Turn three is kicking off. Straight into the action. Jim's going first, and he's popping his HQ activation bonanza. Second Lieutenant, Herr Scheiser, along with two others. The armoured car, which still sporting seven pins. Jim needs to get those pins down. If the pin markers get to or exceed the morale of the unit, so with the car that's a nine, then the unit routes and is considered destroyed. Jim doesn't want to concede points that way, so he's going to go with the rally. So with a rally, you do an order check. You don't deduct anything from the pins. And if it passes, you can remove D6 plus one pins, which he did pass. So he gets to remove five pins. So the car's safe and it now only has two pins left. So next, as part of that group activation, he's going to activate the grenadiers that are in the half track. They're going to advance out. Okay, he's closing them to the hedge for some cover. And then he's going to fire down the road at the paras. So this squad of grenadiers has three assault rifles, six rifles and an LMG. The assault rifles are two shots each, and as they're assault, they don't take minus one to hit when moving. So long range, light cover for the paras, hit on fives. One isn't in range and can't fire, so only two of them will be firing, and one hit. The LMG needs a loader, so that assault rifle who is out of range, that'll be their job. So five dice for the LMG, because of Hitler's buzzsaw or whatever the rule is, and six rifles, but they're all hitting on sixes, and he doesn't get any. So he gets one attempt at a wound on a five up. No wound. Okay. But the paras do get a pin for their worries because they did take a hit. So lastly, Jim's HQ as part of that activation. He's going to advance and use its assault rifles to try again on those paras. Five's needed. All hit. Bloody hell. Five's to wound. One goes through and it's a six. So if Jim can roll another six, he can pick the casualty. But he doesn't get it, so I pick it. So just another rifleman. Fourth dice of the round. Oh, Jim again. Bloody Germans. Is he slipping his dice back in the bag? So the spotter is going to advance to their hedge and will shoot at the pier again. So moved. Now my target has hard cover and it's a small team. So six is followed by six is needed, but not gotten. <laughs> Good. Finally, British go. Let's open up the pain. So the Jeep is going to stay still and open up the forward guns on those grenadiers. Screw those Nazis. Well, don't don't screw Nazis, just punch them with bullets. But not in real life, because that's illegal. That's what my legal team told me to inform you. Uh, only in fictional environments. So the HMG is 3D6 and it brings in two wounds. Good. Um, and one is a six again, so I get to choose the casualty. That LMG has to go, which is a good start. The Vickers is 5d6 and it gets 3 hits and 3 further wounds. So the Grenadiers have lost 5 and they get a pin. Now being half the squad's been wiped out, they now do a morale test, which they pass, so the other 5 don't run away. The next dice is British again, so the Paras we put in that house, they're going to also take a shot at those Grenadiers. So we've got 1 LMG and 9 rifles, but 1 is the loader, so 8 rifles. The range is nominal, but the Germans do have light cover, so it's 4s to hit. And I can just roll them all together because it's all the same. So 12d6, 5 hits, 4s to wound, 4 wounds scored. Good. 6s, so I'm going to re-roll these. 6s again, nice. So I'm going to pick out those assault rifles because those are nasty. Oh my god! Who sold you those dice? So technically, we should have run another morale check here because more than half of the 5 guys in the squad have been wiped out. Um, and it's as you wipe out the squad, it progressively becomes easier to break them because they have to do more and more morale checks. But we missed it in the excitement, so we'll just carry on. So finally, Jim gets to go. He tries again, bringing in that last reserve half-track of Grenadiers, because he definitely needs the bodies, that's for sure. He's successful, and he's going to go flanking, keeping that half-track away from the bulk of the entrenched British forces and that Piat squad. So finally, turn three, and the British HQ at last he joins. What have you been doing? Captain Darlin, for those only a lieutenant, cup of tea I imagine. So Jim's grenadiers in the truck, they go down, taking it easy, having a little rest. Oh, long journey for the little goose steppers. Oh, shh, it's not wake. Now the paras have taken a beating by the woods, 
So they're going to try and rally, which they pass, which is good, and they can remove all their pins. Nice. The Mortar Spotter, he's going to pull himself together, think of King of Country, and trek back into those woods, losing a pin for managing that order. Good job. You go, champ. British dice again. I'm conscious here that Jim hasn't moved that Panamag and he has a dice left. So the Piat team, which is probably the best threat to his vehicles, I'm going to run them into the building and attempt to edge closer under cover, which was actually a good move because the order dice comes up and the half track is going to move as its own grenadiers are blocking its line of sight. So Jim drives it around with a three point turn and opens up on the Jeep and fouls. No hit. Two order dice left for the Brits. The commandos are going to advance and open up with them SMGs. All assault two, but only 12 inch range. Given the range, the cover, firing on a small squad, it'll be sixes followed by sixes. No luck. All the Brits have left now is the forward observer. So you might as well just take a fire with that air observer again. <laughs> and he did it. Good job. Oh, that field observer is probably the MVP at this rate. Get that man a medal. The last shot of the game brings the score 2-1 to the British, on to turn 4. So we're halfway through now and everything is on the board. Jim gets the first dice again and of course he goes group activation with that officer. It's a pretty good strategy. You know, you can either pour fire into something and try and deny me orders this turn by either forcing me down or wiping out a unit and taking my order dice. Or you could use it as a way to move units into better position as a group. Unfortunately, everything there is kind of grouped up and I don't have the means to punish him for having them all bunched up like that. I could really do with having something with a big HE template or maybe even like a second field observer so I could call in another barrage, maybe for future operations. Anyway, the handy mag is going to run away. Jim wants to avoid the Piat team. The armoured car, the 222, that's going to take an order dice and fire in a jeep. It passes the test, that's good, and it can carry on with the shots on the jeep. Two shots against soft cover, so minus one, and still has one pin, so minus another, hitting on fives. One hit. No wound though. One pin for the jeep. Now Officer Klaus, who's going to fire on my paras, long range, light cover, misses spectacular fashion, that's nice. Back to the Brits. So the British Lieutenant, not to be outdone, group activate but can only activate one because he isn't as good as the German officer. So he has been outdone then. Damn. Anyway, the HQ runs around the building looking to get into a better position. The squad in the building, they're going to fire on that lone grenadier. Jim orders him down, burning another order dice, but making the grenadier harder to hit. Minus two to hit. Small team now, because <laughs> I killed all his mates. So minus one because of that. And it's behind soft cover. So <laughs> that's like 78 to hit him or something. So it's going to be sixes followed by sixes. I get 12d6 to roll, two sixes, nice, So, which is exactly average, Not, nothing special about that roll. I roll those two and need more sixes, <laughs> get one, the German takes a hit, four needed to wound, it's the four. Oh, you <laughs> pow pow, take that Klaus, you're the baddies. Bringing it home now, 3-1 to the British. Jim gets the next activation and he hasn't got much left, so, so it's the half track on the flank. Advance and fire. He's going to go for that spotter in the woods, eh? Ugh. Okay, minus one to hit because it's a small team. Minus one for moving first. Minus one for soft cover. But plus one for close range. So fives to hit. One hit. Fives to kill. Oh, he rolls a six, a son of a bit. Anyway, fortunately, uh, the spotter doesn't give him a point because he's part of the mortar team. But he does deny that extra line of sight. Um, technically, uh, spotter... Um, unless he's moved, always counts us down. So we should have done sixes followed by sixes to get him. But we let it stand because no one can remember every rule. So still 3-1 in your face, Hitler. Maybe a sound bite from Jim for this. This is why no one likes you, mate. <laughs> yeah, but I can live with it if I win. So there's still six British orders to go this turn. Jim has one. So which dice is next? Mine. <laughs> so the Malta, I'm um, now lacking a spotter. It's now going to have to move to that wall, get greater visibility so it can fire on units. Brits again. These commandos, they're going to run. So they're good with assault. They're good with close combat. And they've got that tank hunter, so they've got to get in now. Brits again. The forward observer, he's going to take a shot at the German officer, but he misses. Ahmed, take that medal away. Uh, last grey dice comes up and the grenadiers dismount. Jim's, gonna, Jim's moving them into the woods. And he's going to take a shot at that half-strength para squad. 
So rifles, LMG, assault rifles, all in range, all quite close. Uh, the unit moved, so that's minus one to hit. So the target, the paras are not going to get cover from where his squad are. So he's going to get plus one for short range. Okay. I'm going to order them all down, make them a little harder to hit. The assault rifles don't care that they moved. So three is base to hit. They will be plus one for short range, so hitting on twos. But because I am down, that'll be minus two, so I'll be hitting on fours. Fours needed. Six shots. Oh, you got four out of six. Ouch. Okay, so next he's going to do the 10d6 for the LMG and the rifles. And these will need fives because of the movement. Five hits. Okay, half of them. It's pretty good. Okay, now he has 9d6s for the wounds. So he's going to need fives for these. Not a single, <laughs> single one. Hang on, let's, let's just try that again. Let's try that again. Yeah, there we go. Four dead. <laughs> that was shocking. So there's two older dice left in the bag and they're both British. So the Piats, they're going to continue to run up. They're leaving the building. They're going to book it via the front gate and over to the hedge. And the Jeep, that's going to, I'm going to open up on those Germans that are in the wood. So 8d6, and they will be fives to hit, but only one scored the hit, sad face. Fours to wound, oh, none, oh, god damn it. Okay, that's the end of turn four. Scores are sat at a staggeringly high three for the Brits, and a lowly one for the damn right shifty Germans. Go big or go home. Turn five. Two to go. Okay. First dice. <laughs> Let's go tank hunting. So the Piat team, they're going to advance and they're going to open up on that armoured car. And it hits. And it wounds. Oh, but only superficial again, bloody thing. Why won't it die? So it's down again, so those guns aren't going to be any use this turn. But no point from it. That thing should have plenty of bloody holes in it by now. The commandos, they're going to take a shot at the HQ. Jim's putting him down, which is good for me because then I'm forcing the group activation off the menu this round. So a ton of SMG shots. So sixes followed by sixes for the target. Get four sixes, oh, but no follow-ups. Okay, they're left a bit exposed, but we have only two turns left. I need to force Jim out of this entrenched position. The half-strength paras, they're opening up on the grenadiers in the woods. First off, as they're so close to the enemy unit, they have a special rule. It's a national characteristic for my whole platoon called Vengeance. So if my unit has pins and I'm regular or veteran, which covers all of my um, units, and I'm within 12 inches of an enemy, I can roll a d6 and on a four up I can remove a pin. Then after that's removed, I can carry on with the order and any further pinning checks or whatever's that's required. So a little something something to knock some extra pins off, which is pretty sweet. So the paras get a five, they remove a pin. I'm going to fire the LMG with a loader and another two rifles. So 66 and I need threes. Short range, but he gets light cover because he's in the woods. Uh, five hits, not too bad. Uh, he gets a pin. Oh, two wounds, nice. But the six doesn't go anywhere, so not bad though. Uh, Jim gets to go next. Oh, he's got so many options. My light infantry is all over the shop. So he's going to Hannah mag it into those commandos. He sees the threat that those guys pose. So six shots hitting on fours. Oh, he gets all of them, son of a bitch. <laughs> Fives to wound. I guess four of those as well. God damn it. So there's a pin on the commandos and he's forced a morale check, which they pass. They're fine. Uh, the Germans get the next turn as well. Oh, no. Might not have made the best tactical choice here by bum rushing these guys. So the half track is going to close in and take a shot at those last two commandos. Two hits. Come on. What's he going to roll? Snake eyes, ones, 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 ones. Two threes, I'll accept that. Okay, it's taking some pressure off. British now. So the Jeep, um, I'm going to pour more into those grenadiers in the woods. 8d6, fours needed to hit. Oh, get it, nice. Threes to wound, oh, three dead. Oh, might as well take a shot with the mortar. Sixes, as that unit has moved. Oh, what a waste of a roll. The Observer runs a little closer. So Jim again. He wants to finish those paras with the Grenadiers in the woods. He's going to go for it. He's got to take a pin check. Oh, he fouls. 
Oh, they're going down. That's good. Okay, British HQ. He's going to run, get in a better position. And the paras in the building, uh, they're just going to put their feet up. Have a cup of tea. Have a cup of tea, lads. You've earned it. So no units killed this round. Score stands at 3-1. Round six, potentially the last round. So Brits first and the Piat is going to try again and it fluffs it at that range. At that range? With that calibre? Uh, it doesn't inspire confidence really. Oh, how the hell is that armoured car still going? So Brits again and commandos finally. All right then. Now we're going to do some close combat assaulting on that vehicle. So we're going to charge that half track. So because they've got tank hunter they don't need to take a morale check to charge a vehicle. They can just run straight in. But they do have to do a pin check because they've got pins, but they make it, it's fine. So there's only two of them left. So I get to roll 2d6. I need fours, and this will be my penetration. I get one. So I've got plus one pen, which means I've got to roll a six just to get a superficial wound on this thing. Ah, oh, I rolled five. Bugger. Okay, I have to regroup now. The vehicle doesn't get to retaliate. So I roll a d6 for range. One inch. All right, and I'm just going to edge away a little bit. Right that actually destroys it because you're the closest unit to the transport. This is further away. Oh, does it? Yeah. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Thanks for the honesty there, Jim. So to reiterate what has happened here, um, if an enemy unit is closer to an empty transport than a friendly unit, then it is automatically destroyed, which is pretty sweet. Oh, 4-1. Nice. Who's next? Okay, next dice, Germans. And they're going to go straight for the throat. The ones in the woods, they're looking to take out the parry unit. First off, morale check. Oh, okay, he passed it on the snake eyes. So he can remove D6 plus one pins. And being he's so close, it's going to be twos to hit. Oh, too many hits. All five ups. Oh, they're all dead. Okay, there's no need to reroll the sixes. Bugger. Okay, 4-2 now. 4-2 to the Brits. The Germans get to go again, and the half track is going to try and take out that Piat team. So we, Jim's advancing and firing. So the half track's in short range, but it moved, so that cancels out the short range bonus. He is firing on a small team, so it'll be forced to hit. Wound on a five up. Half the team wiped, so morale test. Easy pass. Oh, okay. That was rushing along now, and it's all coming to the end. Okay, back to the Brits. And the Jeep is going to fire on those Grenadiers in the woods again. Hitting on fours with the HMG and the Vickers. Two heavy gun hits and three Vickers hits. So fours to wound with the Vickers, but threes to wound with the heavy gun. Oh, balls, only two. Okay, one's a six. And a six again. <laughs> okay, so that LMG, that's coming out. You can fuck right off. Um, to see, if he goes to turn seven, then taking the LMG out will help. You know, take the sting out of that unit in case I don't wipe it. Okay, back to the Germans. The uh, the HQ, he's going to group activate on the armoured car. Oh, these are the last two German dice of the round. Okay, so armoured car is going to try and fire at the commandos. You really do with killing those and getting that extra victory point. He's rolling for the pin. Oh, he fouls. <laughs> no! Oh! Oh, it's going to give, that gives us some breathing room for the Brits for sure. Totally not what Jim wanted. The HQ itself, it's going to go for the Piat team. Try and deny that chance to shoot the armoured car again. Like that bloody Piat team would do anything anyway. So the armoured car is Swiss cheese now, but it's still running. So no victory point for me here. Uh, they just don't make them like that anymore. Okay, so four shots, hitting on threes. Three hits, fives to the wound. Oh, he got it as well. Oh, the Piat team's gone. It's toast. 4-3. Okay, four British dice left. Try and get another point. Uh, we've got the mortar, which, of course, it fails. Piece of crap. Uh, the paras, only the top floor can fire. The bottom floor are blocked by the Brit units by the wall. The LMG is firing in nominal range, but against a small team behind hardcover, 
So six is needed. I get none. Then the rifles, they're outside nominal. So six is followed by sixes with three rifles. Oh, I get a six. Can I get another one? No. Okay, fine. Uh, finally, the spotter and the HQ. Um, I'll roll them together. They both need a six to hit. None. Okay, that's it. All done. Uh, roll for turn seven. Four up for the extra turn. It's three. <laughs> Okay, so Operation Demo Bunker ends here, ladies and gentlemen. 4-3 to the British platoon, but only one point in it, so it ends as a draw with no clear winner. Bloody good show. Uh, we'll have to have a rematch once our forces are replenished. Well, this was a long vid and it's taken a while to do. Apologies. Um, this is actually our second match because the first one I managed to accidentally delete a load of the footage. So we had to do a rematch. Different scenario though. Um, and then I got sick, so I haven't been able to do the voice work. You might still be able to hear it in my voice. Uh, so it's the first time that I've done a full game as a demo on the channel. Uh, I hope it helped with some of the rules. I know we've made a couple of mistakes, and I'm sure there's probably some we don't know about. But, you know, it was a good laugh. That's what's important. Uh, Jim plans to expand his facilities, and it will allow me to do some more recording and use and use some more in-game recording in the future. But at the moment, there's just too much foot traffic in the store. Uh, if you need any bolt action, then check out Jim's store, Games Bunker. Uh, I've just got a normal link in the description below. It's not paid for or anything like that. In fact, it was even my idea to use that dice tray, which is Jim's prototype. He hasn't got any merch yet, but he should have some for sale soon. So thanks for joining. Hopefully watching all the way through, but I know it's a long one, so that's fine. Uh, next video... Actually, no, it's not fine. Watch the thing the whole way through, you dicks. <laughs> Uh, so next video I'll probably go back to Necromunda. Um, I've got some skills videos to make still. Um, but it's good to add bolt action to the mix and I hope I'll do more of it in the future if people like the content. So subscribe, like, share, pound that algorithm for me. Peace.